Hello professionals, welcome to YK360 YouTube channel, in this video we are going to see some important questions and answers for API 510 closed book examination. If you're new to the channel subscribe us and support us. Question number 1. The Vickers test is A. Options are A. Microscopic test B. Hardness test C. Incipient melting test D. Ductility test. Answer is option B. Hardness test. Question number 2. Materials test reports can be a very valuable tool for the inspector and welding engineer. There are typically two types. Reports. Options are A. Ferrite and martensite assay type. B. Martensite and cementite chemistry. C. Stalactite and martensite analysis. D. Heat analysis and a product analysis. Answer is option D. Heat analysis and a product analysis. Question number 3. When speaking of materials acceptable for use in welding processes, the term S number refers to. Options are A. Materials which are listed in the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code material specification. B. Materials which are not listed in the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code material specifications of Section 2. C. Alternative numbers for P nose. D. Alternative number for F nose. Answer is option B. Materials which are not listed in the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code material specifications of Section 2. Question number 4. You are reading a WPS and see that it was qualified using P number 5A to P number 5A, you know that. Options are A. This WPS can be used to weld any P or S no 5 material. B. This WPS can be used to weld any P or S no 5A to any metal from P or S nose 5A, 4, 3, or 1. C. This WPS can be used to weld only P or S no 5A D. This WPS can be used to weld any P or S no 5A to any metal from P or S nose 5A, 4, or 3. Answer is option B. This WPS can be used to weld any P or S no 5A to any metal from P or S nose 5A, 4, 3, or 1. Question number 5. A welding procedure must be requalified if Options are A. There is a change in any essential variable. B. There is a change in any non-essential variable. C. There is code revision which makes it obsolete, such as a base material being dropped from the list of approved ASME code materials. D. The welder is dissatisfied with the procedure. Answer is option A. There is a change in any essential variable. Question number 6. A welder must requalify if he has previously. Options are A. Not qualified without backing and is now required to perform a weld without backing. B. Has qualified without backing and is required to now weld with backing. C. Not welded with a given process. D. Has welded with a process in two years. Answer is option A. Not qualified without backing and is now required to perform a weld without backing. Question number 7. The dimensions of a plate test coupons for welding procedure qualification test can be found in. Options are A. Article 2 of Section VB. Article 2 of Section 9. C. Article 4 of Section 9. D. Article 4 of Section V. Answer is option. C. Article 4 of Section 9. Question number 8. Which of the following markings cannot be found on an ASME code vessel's nameplate? Options are A. The manufacturer's serial no. B. The manufacturer's name. C. The year built. D. The names of all welders who worked on the vessel. Answer is option D. The names of all welders who worked on the vessel. Question number 9. A relief valves in the hydrofluoric acid service must be. 
Options are A. Be neutralized immediately after removal. B. Set using water only. C. Set using hydrofluoric acid. D. Set using air only. Answer is option A. Be neutralized immediately after removal. Question number 10. The following is true about the hydrostatic testing of vessels. Options are A. Tests must be performed using non volatile fluids. B. Tests must be performed using water. C. This test is the most dangerous of all pressure tests. D. This test is the least dangerous of all pressure tests. Answer is option D. This test is the least dangerous of all pressure tests. Question number 11. FCAW equipment is and portable than that for SMAW. Options are A. Less complex, less costly and more B. More complex, more costly and less C. More complex, less costly and less D. Less complex, more costly and more. Answer is option B. More complex, more costly, and less. Question number 12. Corrosion fatigue effects. Options are A. Carbon steel and stainless steels B. Stainless steels only C. All metals and alloys D. Nickel and duplex stainless alloys. Answer is option C. All metals and alloys. Question number 13. Atmospheric corrosion effects. Options are A. Carbon steel, low alloy steels and copper alloyed nickel. B. Carbon steel, low alloy steels and copper alloyed aluminum C. Molybdenum alloys, carbon steel and copper alloyed aluminum D. Carbon steels only, answer is option B. Carbon steel, low alloy steels and copper alloyed aluminum. Question number 14. Cast structures depending on their chemical composition can exhibit a wide range of mechanical properties for several reasons. In general, it is desirable to keep the size of grain small, which improves. Options are A. Weldability B. Strength and toughness E. Machining methods D. Corrosion resistance Answer is option B. Strength and toughness Question number 15. Copper zinc alloys can suffer desensification in fresh, brackish and salt water systems. The copper zinc alloys can suffer if any ammonia or ammonia compounds are present in the water. Options are A. CLCCB SCCC HGHAD Intergranular corrosion, answer is option B. SCC Your one like is, so valuable for us. If you find this video helpful, please support us through a super thanks. You one can super thanks will be more helpful for us. Let us continue the questions. Question number 16. The is adjacent to the weld and is that portion of the base metal that has not been melted, but whose mechanical properties or microstructure have been altered by the preheating temperature and the heat of welding. Options are A. Fusion line, B. Heat affected zone, HAZ, C. Root interface, D. Bevel of a butt weld. Answer is option, B. Heat affected zone, HAZ. Question number, 17. Boiler condensate oxygen scavenging treatments typically include or hydrazine depending on the system pressure level along with proper mechanical to reader operation. Options are A. Disassociated sulfur, B. Deprecated hydrazine, C. Deprecated sodium sulfide, D. Catalyzed sodium sulfide. Answer is option, D. Catalyzed sodium sulfide. Question number, 18. Corrosion of carbon steel and other alloys resulting from the reaction with sulfur compounds is. Options are. A. Carburization, B. Decarburization, C. Sulfidation, D. Sulfur attack. Answer is option, C. Sulfidation. Question number, 19. Thicker material sections also have a lower resistance to brittle fracture due to higher constraint which increases stresses at the crack tip. 
options are A. Biaxial B. Trioxial C. Coaxial D. Pinaxial Answer is option B. Trioxial Question number 20 a pure metal has a definite melting temperature that is just above its solidification temperature. However, complete melting of alloy materials occur. Options are A. When the highest melting element of the alloy has reached its melting point, B. Over a range of temperatures, C. When the lowest melting element of the alloy has reached its melting point, D. At two distinct temperatures points, answer is option B. Over a range of temperatures. Question number 21. When the hydrostatic testing of discharge piping for pressure relief devices is to be performed what can happen if precaution, S, are not taken? Options are A. The disc, spring, and body of the area on the inlet of the valve can be damaged. B. The disc, spring, and body of the area on the discharge of the valve are fouled. C. The disc, spring, and body of the area on the inlet of the valve can be damaged. D. The disc, spring, and body of the area on the inlet of the valve can be fouled. Answer is option, B. The disc, spring, and body of the area on the discharge of the valve are fouled. Question number, 22. When setting time intervals between the inspections of relief devices, which of the following best apply? Options are A. They must be done at least every 8 years. B. They must be done at least every 3 years. C. Definite time intervals must be established. D. None of the above. Answer is option C. Definite time intervals must be established. Question number 23. As regards unscheduled inspections of relief devices, if a relief device opens but fails to reseat properly, options are A. It must be immediately repaired. B. The urgency of repair will depend on the nature of the leakage and production requirements. C. The urgency will depend only on the value of the leaking fluid. D. The urgency will depend on the type of leakage and the characteristics of the leaking substance such as whether it is toxic, flammable, or fouling. Answer is option D. The urgency will depend on the type of leakage and the characteristics of the leaking substance such as whether it is toxic, flammable, or fouling. Question number 24. A visual on-stream inspection of a relief device is not meant to ensure which of the following items? Options are A. Installation of the correct device and the company ID such as a tag. B. No gags or blinds left in place and all intervening block valves being open. C. Upstream block valves are locked or chained in the proper position. D. The valve's discharge is pointed in the right direction. Answer is option D. The valve's discharge is pointed in the right direction. Question number 25. Hot cracking is. Options are. A. Cracking formed at 3500F during operations of stainless vessels and piping. B. Cracking formed at 5500F during operations carbon and low alloy steel piping and vessels. C. Cracking formed at temperatures near the completion of solidification during welding. D. Cracking formed above a 250OF preheat during welding. Answer is option C. Cracking formed at temperatures near the completion of solidification during welding. Question number 26. Who is responsible for confirming that welding equipment has been calibrated? Options are A. The inspector B. The welding foreman C. The welder using the equipment D. The owner user. Answer is option A. The inspector. Question number 27. The is responsible for quality craftsmanship of weldments. Options are A. Welder B. Inspector C. Welding foreman D. Quality control manager. Answer is option A. Welder. Question number 28. With SMAW depending on the type of electrode being used, 
The covering performs one or more of the following functions. Options are A. Absorbs moisture stabilize the arc. B. Provides scavengers, deoxidizers, and fluxing agents to cleanse the weld and promote grain growth in the weld metal. C. Establishes the electrical characteristics of the electrode. D. Provides a protective layer for inner core wire. Answer is option C. Establishes the electrical characteristics of the electrode. Question number 29. CUI damage is aggravated by contaminants that may be leached out of the insulation, such as Options are A. Chlorides, B. Fluorides, C. Hydroxides and nitrous oxide, D. Cyanides and hydrogen oxide. Answer is option A. Chlorides. Question number 30. One commonly accepted advantages of the GTAW process is Options are A. No post-weld cleaning is required. B. Produces high-purity weld, generally free from defects. C. Allows for excellent control of filler pass penetration. D. Can be used with or without filler metal in all situations. Answer is option B. Produces high-purity weld, generally free from defects. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please support us with a super thanks. For question bank downloads, visit our site www.sodimaru.com.